Cola Super Deep Borehole During its prime, the Soviet Union conducted several dangerous experiments in its ongoing effort to become the world leader in scientific and technological progress. Many of their risky endeavors were fruitful, but some of the shortcuts they took led to horrifying catastrophes. It's no wonder, then, that when the Soviets began an undisclosed experiment within the Arctic Circle to dig the deepest hole in human history, many feared this could unleash apocalyptic consequences. The Kola Super Deep Borehole Project began drilling on May 24, 1970, near Russia's border with Norway. Its main goal was to break through the Earth's crust and reach the upper mantle. Also, Soviet scientists planned to conduct a wide range of geophysical examinations and uncover new information regarding the mineral composition of the area. Breaking into Earth's upper mantle hadn't been done before, and no one knew what consequences it would bring to the planet's civility. To make things worse, the digging process was long and complex, and spanned almost three decades in distinct phases. Meanwhile, several rumors and conspiracy theories began to spread among the world's population. Some individuals argued that breaking through the Earth's crust would result in a series of seismic disasters that would bring modern civilization to its knees. Others claimed that attaining such a deep and significant perforation could mess with the delicate inner balance of the Earth's mantles, throwing the planet's magnetic field off balance and warranting immeasurable damage from space objects and radiation. One of the most bizarre theories was known as the Well to Hell. The story claimed that Soviet scientists suddenly stopped the project because they began to experience supernatural phenomena near the site. Some sources stated that the scientists lowered a special heat-resistant microphone into the depths of the bore, and what they heard frightened them beyond reason. A few of the alleged audio files can be found online, and the tormented screams of numerous people can be heard repeatedly. Many still believe the Soviet scientists drilled too close to a hellish underworld plane. The project officially ended in August of 1994. The maximum depth reached by the borehole was 40,230 feet, and the operation was halted because of the incredibly high and unexpected temperatures. The registered heat surpassed 356 degrees. To this day, there is still a debate about whether the heat was just an unforeseen and ordinary event, or if it was a sign of unnatural phenomena. Trinity Test In 1942, Nazi Germany appeared unstoppable, and conquering all of Europe seemed just a matter of time. Renowned theoretical physicists across the globe like Albert Einstein, Arthur Compton, and Leo Szilard knew that nuclear fission was possible, and a devastating weapon that could be built very soon. And if German scientists managed to create an atomic bomb before the Allies, it would ensure their victory. Hence, the Manhattan Project was born. Unbeknownst to the Allied powers, Nazi Germany was not that keen on continuing with its nuclear research. Hitler and Albert Speer, the Nazi Minister of Armament, feared the possibility of igniting the entire planet's atmosphere and ending life on Earth. Speer himself described the situation in his memoir, quote, Heisenberg had not given any final answer to my question whether a successful nuclear fission could be kept under control with absolute certainty or might continue as a chain reaction. Hitler was plainly not delighted with the possibility that the Earth under his rule might be transformed into a glowing star. Allied scientists involved in the Manhattan Project also recognized this tremendous risk and used precious months to research the implications and plausibility of setting the atmosphere on fire. Still, Operation Trinity, the plan to test the first atomic bomb in the New Mexico desert, remained on track. Robert Oppenheimer, head of the Manhattan Project, had seriously considered the terrible possibility that the Trinity test would result in the complete destruction of life on Earth. In a conversation with Oppenheimer, Arthur Compton asked, quote, The nitrogen in the air is also unstable. Might not it, too, be set off by an atomic explosion in the atmosphere? To which Oppenheimer replied, quote, the Earth would be vaporized. Compton was afraid after hearing of that dreadful possibility and wasn't sure if the whole endeavor was worth it. Quote, it would be the ultimate catastrophe. Better to accept the slavery of the Nazis than to run the chance of drawing the final curtain on mankind. However, after extensive calculations, the Manhattan Project team concluded that it was practically impossible to ignite the atmosphere with a nuclear bomb detonation, 
and the Trinity test was carried out according to plan at 5.29 a.m. on July 16, 1945. Thankfully, the scientists were right. Large Hadron Collider After a 10-year building period, the European Organization for Nuclear Research finished the construction of the Large Hadron Collider in September of 2008. It instantly became the largest and most powerful particle accelerator in the world, and its purpose was to accelerate subatomic particles at near light speed against each other and study the resulting quantum energy release. However, no one knew for sure what would happen. As far back as 1971, Stephen Hawking theorized about the existence of black holes with a mass much smaller than that of a star. Other physicists eventually calculated that artificial micro-black holes could be created by humans using a powerful enough particle collider. That's when some media outlets like The Times, The Guardian, The Independent, and Time started to circulate a rather dreadful possibility, the uncontrolled growth of a black hole that would eventually swallow all of Earth's matter. CNN even published a story saying, quote, Some have expressed fears that the project could lead to the Earth's demise. After such news, many people fell into panic and wild speculation. Some groups even started to demand the immediate dismantlement of the all-new $4.7 billion collider. It took a joint effort from the scientific community and the media to calm the public down. A message was released, explaining that although micro-black holes were a theoretical possibility, they were so microscopic and so unstable that they would instantly decay thanks to a phenomenon called Hawking's radiation. Ironically, a fear started by a poor interpretation of Hawking's theories was resolved by an adequate explanation of his thesis. Starfish Prime The Soviet Union's rivalry with the U.S. during the Cold War continued to escalate as both nations bolstered their atomic arsenals and conducted increasingly riskier experiments with nuclear material in their pursuit to outdo their opponent. To ease some of these fears and tensions, the U.S. signed a treaty with the Soviet Union in 1958 in which they agreed to stop the testing of nuclear armament. The world breathed a sigh of relief, but it would be short-lived. In 1961, the Soviet Union publicly declared its intentions to continue testing nuclear weapons, starting with a program to examine the effects of detonating atomic warheads in space. The U.S. saw only one possible response, to do the same and hope to beat the Soviets at it. However, there were big stakes at play. Scientists were unsure what could happen if a nuclear bomb exploded in Earth's orbit and feared it could disrupt radio communications, destroy satellites, or perhaps even disable a whole country. The U.S. could not just sit and watch while the Soviets developed a new kind of warfare. However, for all the optimistic individuals assuring the test would lead to an enormous tactical superiority, others foretold a much darker outcome and were apprehensive that the U.S. was performing these tests in a rush without adequately researching all possible results. The primary hypothesis was that detonating a hydrogen bomb just outside of Earth's atmosphere could massively damage the planet's electromagnetic field, if not obliterate it. The Earth would be left defenseless against the radioactive solar wind and cosmic rays, the global climate would be devastated, and radiation would cripple the well-being of the world's populations. In the grimmest of scenarios, strong solar winds could theoretically rip the Earth's atmosphere away, immediately ending all life on Earth. The U.S. authorities disregarded these fears, and on July 9, 1962, executed Operation Starfish Prime, detonating a 1.4 megaton thermonuclear warhead 250 miles above the Pacific Ocean. The explosion generated a massive flash of light in the sky, the likes of which had never been seen before. Some Hawaii residents claimed to have seen what appeared to be a bright orange aurora borealis that brightened the whole sky. The blast also caused satellites all over the world to malfunction or be thrown out of orbit. In Hawaii, streetlights blew off, telephone lines were damaged, radio communications were interrupted, and security alarms went off. There had been much more damage than the government had expected. Luckily, not so much as to bring the end of the world. SETI The search for extraterrestrial life has always been a controversial topic. Scientists didn't take the idea seriously for a long time, while others considered it a waste of time and resources. However, by the 1960s, 
astrophysics, space exploration, and astronomy had advanced so significantly that more and more members of the scientific community declared that finding traces of an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization was just a matter of time. Many astrophysicists such as Enrico Fermi had calculated that the possibility of having such an astronomical number of stars in the Milky Way was absolutely ridiculous. Even more so, as many of these stars had more than one planet at the proper distance from the Sun to produce life. Hence, the SETI initiative was born. The program's mission was to construct massive arrays of radio telescopes worldwide to detect incoming radioactivity from extraterrestrial life and even send information back to them. However, building and maintaining such a massive and ambitious operation would require billions of dollars, and convincing the government to back this project was sure to be a difficult task. Carl Sagan, one of the most influential and famous astrophysicists of all time, backed the project and helped it come to fruition. As a fervent ally of the SETI initiative, he was utterly convinced that if the project was conducted as planned, humans would find signs of intelligent life from outer space within a decade. But not all brilliant minds were so eager to make contact with alien life forms, and Stephen Hawking was one of the scientists who had reservations. He once said, quote, If aliens ever visit us, I think the outcome would be much as when Christopher Columbus first landed in America, which didn't turn out very well for the Native Americans. Opinions like that have convinced many people across the decades that SETI is a danger to our civilization. Some of SETI's detractors argue that if the project is not stopped, we risk attracting the attention of a powerful alien civilization with technologies eons more advanced than ours. And if our past treatment of less developed cultures is any indication of what might happen, we can expect total eradication or enslavement of the Earth's population. SETI's arrays are still operating, and its critics claim that the risk is still there, growing more and more likely every day. Thank you for watching my video. Which of these five experiments do you think was actually closer to destroying the world? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And remember to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels for even more exciting and unbelievable stories.